Hi guys, welcome to another episode of the Armourer's Bench. Uh, my name's Matt and today we are going to take a look at this very early uh, G3. Uh, I am filming today at the Cody Firearms Museum at the Buffalo Bill Centre of the West in Wyoming and I'm lucky enough to take a look at this gun and some others. So let's dive right in and take a look at the weapon close up. We're all familiar with the HK G3 and its roll delay blowback action. What's less well known is that HK were one of two companies originally contracted by the West German government to produce the Bundeswehr's new service rifle. The other company was Rheinmetall, and today we're lucky enough to be taking a look at an example of an early production Rheinmetall G3. The rifle which became the G3 was of course originally developed by the German and Spanish engineers at the Centro de Estudias Técnicos de Materiales Especiales, or CETMI and was intended to equip the Spanish Armed Forces. Initially, the West German Bundesgrenschutz, or Border Guards, were interested in purchasing a substantial number of the new SEMI rifles. An initial order of 5,000 had been agreed, but in September 1955, the order was cancelled due to delays in getting the SEMI into production, and the Bundesgrenschutz subsequently ordered the FNFAL instead. In November 1955, the Bundeswehr, the new West German military, was reformed and began to search for a suitable new 7.63x51mm service rifle. Having observed the Bundesgrundschutz's testing, the fledgling Bundeswehr took interest in the SETMI rifle. 400 STG SETMIs were ordered for troop trials, and these were assembled in Germany by H&K. The rifles were delivered in late 1956, and comparative trials against the FAL began the following year. The trials found the SDG SETMI to be satisfactory in terms of both features and design, but lacking in durability. A number of small changes were requested, including a flash hider suitable for launching rifle grenades, either a flip-up or diopter rear sight instead of the traditional tangent style, a spent case deflector, a simple more ergonomic pistol grip, a longer cocking handle, changes to the recoil spring guide, and tweaks to the buttstock shape. Additional improvements such as a stronger bipod, lighter magazine and a last round hold open were also requested, as well as an overall lightening of the rifle, a lighter 20 round magazine and a proper handguard. With adoption looking likely, legal wrangling over patent ownership began between Mauser, Rheinmetall and H&K all claimed the ownership of the roll delayed blowback principle used by the SETMI. Eventually, however, the West German government awarded Rheinmetall and HK future production contracts for the new rifle, but the legal battles continued for almost a decade. In the meantime, with production of the SETMI rifle not yet initiated, and in light of some of the durability and reliability issues suffered during the SETMI's troop trials, 100,000 Series C FNFALs were ordered for the Bundeswehr in late 1956. In 1957, the SIG 510 designated the G2, and the American Armalite AR-10 designated the G4 were also evaluated. Once the modifications requested after the troop trials were completed by HK, a run of 20 rifles were produced and tested again. In 1959, the West German government finally adopted the SETMI rifle, designating it the G3. The German federal government decided that they wished to purchase the worldwide manufacturing rights to the G3, which naturally the Spanish government were reluctant to agree to. An agreement was finally reached in January 1958, and the contract giving West Germany worldwide rights to the G3 was finalised on February 4th, 1959. One issue was that in June 1957, Setme had agreed a licensing deal for manufacture and sale of the rifle with a Dutch company, NWM. In order to gain the manufacturing rights sold to NWM, the German government awarded the Dutch company a lucrative contract producing 20mm ammunition. In late January 1959, HK were awarded the first substantial contract amounting to 150,000 rifles. Rheinmetall was subsequently awarded a similar contract. The G3 went through a large number of changes both before and after it went into service. The rifle we're examining today is a good example of an early production rifle, as adopted in 1959. The rifle is lightly marked with G3, followed by Ramatol's Star in a Circle logo, followed by a serial number ending in 745, 
and below that is the date mark of 360 for March 1960. Working our way back from the muzzle, the rifle has the early style flash hider introduced in 1957 and later altered in 1961, an enclosed front sight and a detachable bipod. It has a stamped metal handguard which was replaced by one with a wooden insert in 1961 before HK subsequently introduced plastic furniture in 1964. The folding carrying handle seen on Troop Trials rifles has been removed. The receiver is stepped for the attachment of a scope base and the magazine housing has a single strengthening rib rather than the later full frame continuous rib. It has an SEF selector and a black plastic pistol grip. Unlike the later G3s, the rifle has a two-position L-shaped rear aperture sight, with apertures for 200 and 300 meters, rather than the diopter sight, which was officially adopted in mid-1960. Finally, the rifle has a wooden stock with a stamped metal sling attachment plate. Let's take a quick look at the rifle disassembled. This early production rifle strips just like a later G3, removing the disassembly pins, sliding the butt assembly off, and then pulling the bolt assembly out of the rear of the receiver. Here's the bolt assembly with the all important rollers protruding from the bolt head. At some point somebody scratched Germany into the side of the trigger mech housing. Here we can see the early single rib on the magazine housing. The rifle has a safe semi full auto selector on the left hand side. The sheet metal handguard has recesses for the bipod to sit flush. And here's a closer look at the early pattern flash hider. Rheinmetall produced 500,000 G3s during the 1960s, delivering 8,000 rifles per month. As HK had been designated the technical lead on the G3 project, Rheinmetall's engineers made no attempts to develop improvements or modifications for the G3. And even when HK switched to plastic furniture, the Ramental guns continued to use wood. Ramental's only other G3 related project was the RH4, a 762 by 39 chambered, roller locked but gas operated rifle designed for export. In addition to the G3, Ramental were the sole manufacturer of the MG3, the 762 by 51 version of the MG42. In 1969, when a new tender for G3 and MG3 production was due, HK moved to undercut Rheinmetall, who until now had held the monopoly on MG3 production. As a result, an agreement was reached where Rheinmetall retained the monopoly and HK became the sole manufacturer of the G3 for the West German military. Thanks for watching guys, I hope you enjoyed this uh, look at an early G3. Um, thank you again to the Cody Firearms Museum for letting us film uh, and take a look at their wonderful collection. Uh, don't forget to check out our blog and you can find out a little bit more about this rifle and other G3s and the G3 history. Um, and thanks for watching and don't forget to like, share and subscribe. Thanks. And you can now support us over on Patreon. The link to that is in the description box below. If you enjoy the videos, please consider supporting us. Thanks for watching.